2024 is sure to mark a pivotal point in the history of Sri Lanka as we are preparing to hold the first presidential election since 2019. And within these five years, Sri Lanka has been through quite a bit. Sri Lanka faced the COVID-19 pandemic, went through an economic recession and also went through a shift of presidents. Now, especially during this heated election period and as always, the News First team is working tirelessly to bring you the very latest and the most accurate information through our trilingual bulletins. Now today with us we have Charlon Benedict to enlighten us on what to expect on our primetime news bulletin at 9 p.m. Well, it's been quite a number of um, contentious days uh, with uh, issues being taken up in the Supreme Court, uh, the presidential election coming along. Uh, people are still, although the presidential election has been declared, um, there are still certain things that needs to be ironed out. Uh, yesterday, the Elections Commission had uh, sent uh, a notice, of course, or a letter to the president uh, asking him to resolve this issue surrounding uh, the IGP's position. Now there are some significant um, developments in that front as well. The Police Commission has appointed uh, Senior Deputy Inspector General of Police Lalit Patinaika as the Senior Deputy Inspector General of Police in charge of Police Administration. Also, the Supreme Court has issued notice on Deshabandhu Tenakon and several other respondents to appear before the Supreme Court. Now that is just only a few of uh, the many incidents that are taking place here in Sri Lanka that is of political significance, especially given that we are now in an election period. Uh, one more thing, uh, Theroni, on the international front, of course, uh, we know that Sri Lanka and India have a bit of contention as far as uh, the Northern Sea boundary or the Pork Strait and, and, and the maritime boundaries between Sri Lanka and India is concerned. Uh, today there was an incident where one Indian fisherman uh, passed away unfortunately and uh, the Sri Lankan High Commission to India has been summoned uh, to lodge India's strong protest surrounding the incident and you can expect on our primetime news bulletin tonight exactly the details of what really happened here and how Sri Lanka is going to progress forward. Thank you, Shalan. Now, in more local news, uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs, President's Counsel Ali Sabri, addressing a special media briefing at the President's Media Centre, covered several key topics. We have with us Budwin Amaradivakara to talk to us a little bit more about that. Budwin? Uh, yes, certainly today has been a very eventful day for the whole country and as you mentioned, Ali, Mr. Al Sabri mentioned about the Indian fisherman death which is one of the major top stories that we are taking today and also he mentioned about the agreements that they have uh, come up with the IMF and also he mentioned about the Japanese projects that were suspended th a few years ago, the 13 projects that he will set, he said that the government of Sri Lanka and the Japanese government will be starting on those 13 projects and he also mentioned about how successful were his trips to other countries, to Romania, to Japan and to many more countries within the last few months and also he mentioned about the cyber slaves, the Sri Lankans who have who are in Myanmar and he said they are still working with the government of Myanmar to take them back to Sri Lanka and also he mentioned about the ex-servicemen in the Russia-Ukraine war who have been in the war for quite some time and he said they are still working with the government so that's the very latest from uh, from my side. Thank Thank you, Budmin. Well, that's all from the newsroom for now. For more comprehensive reports on these stories and much more, make sure to tune in to our primetime news bulletin at 9 p.m. on TV1.